Just so we're clear here, this install is gonna be for a 2015 Chevy Silverado 1500. It's got a six and a half foot bed and it has the 5.3 liter V8 motor in it. So the first thing I've done is remove on both sides of the truck. And just place them off to the side for now. In order for you to have clearance under the truck to install all the components, you're also going to want to remove your spare tire. Okay, the next thing we're going to have to do is remove these exhaust hangers for the moment. So, the easiest way to do this is to take some spray lubricant. I use penetrating oil. You can use WD-40, any type of petroleum-based lubricant. And you want to spray this metal shank and then take a pry bar and pry this out of here. So you're going to want to do the one in the rear. And also we need to do the two in the front up here, which I'll show you how to do this. Also when you do this, your exhaust is going to be hanging and you don't want to leave it hanging without supporting it somehow. So you can take a jack stand or a ratchet strap like I'm doing. I'm just trying to find a good spot to hook this ratchet strap onto. That way we can support our exhaust system. Okay, so now that we have the exhaust out of the way, the next thing we need to do is remove part of the heat shield. Now, I believe in the instructions it says to completely remove the heat shield, but what I plan to do is from this cross member, this bed cross member, which is just right above the rear axle, I'm going to cut there with a four and a half inch angle grinder, and then up to the next cross member, I'm going to cut just that section of heat shield out. So let me set up the camera and we'll cut that out. According to the instructions, we need to modify our wheel well very slightly to allow insertion of one of the supporting uh, structures that's ultimately going to support the gooseneck hitch. So we're currently looking inside the passenger side wheel well, and what you need to do in here is you need to look for the bed cross rail that sits directly above the axle. And from the front of it, we need to go forward six and a half inches. inch high and on the bottom from the center out we're going to need to mark a half inch on either side so in turn we're going to make a triangle that we're going to need to cut out so let me mark that out now. Now we can come in here and cut out this little notch. Alright, so now we need to do what I find to be the most frightening part of this job and we need to drill out a 4 inch hole in the truck bed for this gooseneck hitch to pop up through. Now according to my instructions and I went online and double checked that I had the right instructions for my truck, so we're going to need to find the center of the bed and then from the end of the bed forward we're going to need to measure 44 and 1 8 inch. Now here's what makes this a little bit more challenging, a little bit more complicated. I have a spray in bed liner. Now if you look at this side of my truck here, perhaps you can see it better up here. 
the bed liner does have a thickness and it varies about a sixteenth of an inch right here um, and over here it's like three thirty seconds of an inch so you know, it, it varies slightly so I found that there's a gap down here at the very bottom of the tailgate you can actually see uh, the ground down there and what I plan to do is go down there and I'll stick my head up through and see if I can get a better look at the possible thickness. I'm not sure how much play there's going to be. I don't know if there's going to be any play in the actual hitch system. I, I'm really hoping there is, but again, this is just kind of like the most nerve-wracking part of the installation. Okay, so I've completed my investigation. What I ended up doing, I ended up laying a sweatshirt over this gap here, and then I took a flashlight and I shined it up from the bottom looking up. And visually, I determined the thickness of this bed liner to be 1 16th of an inch from the end of the bed rail. So I need to add 1 16th of an inch onto my measurement. And the instructions call for me to measure from here forward 44 and 1 8 inch. So now I need to make a mark from the end of the bed rail here forward 44 and 3 16 of an inch. And I'm still very nervous about drilling that main hole in the bed. So what I plan to do is I'm going to make my measurement, I'm going to do a small pilot hole, I'm going to begin installing everything else, and I'm going to see if I can line up the hitch from the bottom looking up and, and just try and be sure that I got it in the right spot before I decide to bore that final hole there. With the bolt holes facing the rear, we're going to slide this up here like so. And I feel it hitting something. Um, so what the instructions say to do is go underneath the truck and then guide it the rest of the way. Okay, so here's something you need to be careful with. If you look on this cross member, there's a cutout right here for the brake lines, but if you just tried to force it over, you're going to make contact with those brake lines. So you want to make sure that you lift it up and over and uh, carefully install it. This is what it should look like with the front cross member installed. See how it's about three or four inches forward from that notch. And the brake lines are underneath in that notch. So they're safely protected now, out of the way. So next we need to install the rear cross member. And according to the instructions, I know I say that a lot, but basically what needs to happen, we need to slide this in there. And then you see the bolt holes right here. What we're gonna do while it's positioned underneath the truck, we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees and those bolt holes should be towards the bottom. See how there's a little bit more space on the top, a little bit less on the bottom. So bolt holes on the bottom. And also another tip in the instructions, if you can't turn this by hand, you can get a large adjustable wrench adjusted on here like a fork and then twist it like that. Okay, so same thing as the front cross member here. You're not gonna need to use the notch this time, but just carefully slide it forward. Get it through maybe halfway. If you hit something, obviously stop. Now I'm going to get under the truck, guide it the rest of the way, and I'm going to take an adjustable wrench under there just in case. Something that they don't note in the instructions when you're installing this rear cross member, just be aware you have two brake lines right there and when you need to flip this rear cross member forward, you want to make sure it's as close to this uh, cross member as possible because if you have it back and you try and flip it, there's a good chance you're going to damage the brake line. So again, slide it over horizontally, slide it forward to this cross member and then flip it vertically and, and just try not to put any pressure on those brake lines. Okay, there's a little 
looking at the front of the truck and it tilts us up. There's the differential. There's the two rails. So you can see my little pilot hole. You can see a little bit of light shining out of there. So what I'm going to do now, off camera, I'm going to get a tape measure and just kind of measure up where that hole is lining up. Um, it's definitely closer to the rear cross member, which that's good because if I look at the actual gooseneck hitch plate, um, that plate is slightly towards the back. So again, just going to take some measurements and make sure that it looks like it's good to go. And then I'm probably going to drill that hole in the bed. Okay, so after doing some measurements, I'm pretty confident, 95% sure that this is going to line up just right. So do or die. Okay, so now I'm ready to install this hitch plate. A couple things, you wanna make sure it's right side up, which right now, it's upside down. Also, this ball release slash lock pin, this needs to be facing the driver's side of the truck. And finally, it's up to you if you wanna have some type of lifting device, which I think this is gonna be beneficial to me since I'm probably gonna be doing this alone. So, here's what I've come up with so far. I have a shop stool set up in the back of the truck. And there's a ratchet strap attached to the back there. If you ever seen a, a guy go down in a manhole, he's supposed to wear a harness. He's supposed to be attached to a line and they're supposed to have a lifting system. So that way, you know, if he passes out, you don't have to send a guy down in the hole to extract him. So that's kind of like the design that I've come up with here. Now, the only challenge is going to be figuring out how to ratchet this while I have it positioned. So I'm going to go underneath the truck, see if I can get uh, the hitch plate positioned temporarily where I can come up here and ratchet it up the rest of the way, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so now that the hitch plate is in place, I'm going to affix it to the cross rails with the provided hardware. I'm going to be doing this off camera because there's really not much point to showing you that. Um, I will say the instructions do say that only make the hardware hand tight now. We're going to go back in there later, I'd imagine after we install the frame rails, and then we'll tighten up that hardware. Okay, so we're in the passenger side wheel well right now. You will see some wet paint because I'm going to be putting this uh, side plate on either side. I figured now was an opportune time to just touch up any rust spots. So there was some rust here. I hit it with some Rust-Oleum, rusty metal primer, then some flat black finish. So what I need to do next is I need to give this side frame plate uh, something to bolt onto. and. B&W includes this hardware and basically what happens here you insert this through this hole in the frame which is a little bit back from the rear axle you want to be careful not to let this go you want to hold it by the bolt threads Let's see if we can get it in there it's tight just like so um, this is a carriage bolt by the way and what you're going to want to do is rotate it clockwise until that tab hits the bottom of the frame which I can feel it has. Then you're going to install this oval bushing. It's just going to slide, slide in there like so. And it's not sitting there completely. I'm going to take a screwdriver and just push it in a little bit. So now that that bushing's in, last thing we're going to need to install. Jeez, it's tricky to hold this thing in place. Let's pop that again. Come on. Alright, but anyway, the last thing that's installed is this retaining clip. Uh, I'm going to move the camera out of the way so I get more room to work on this clockwise till it bottoms out on the bottom of the frame, install the bushing, and install this retaining clip. 
Now here's the issue, this retaining clip is bottomed out on the bolt. It cannot thread in any further, but there's still some play in there. It's not tight. And what I'm concerned about is when I go to install the side plate, it'll knock out that bushing in the frame. Now the instructions do call for a half inch washer to be installed after this retaining clip um, because the side plate is going to hit this bottom weld right here and that'll just make sure the plate you know, remains uniform along the length of the frame here. So what I plan to do, and they really should have meant this in the instructions, is before you put this retaining clip on here, install that half inch washer. So I'm going to take the retaining clip off, put the washer, and then put the retaining clip back on there and then it should be better. Okay, and here's what it looks like with that washer installed behind the retaining piece, and it's better, it's a little bit tighter, but it's still a little bit loose. I, I feel like that bushing won't fall out of its place now though, so I feel better about that. Okay, so I think we're about ready to install our side plate here. We're gonna start off on the passenger side. First thing you want to do is put your hardware on the rear. Flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so one of the last few things we need to install are these U-bolts. Now, the U-bolts have a little cutout section, and it's crucial that you really pay attention on the driver's side. I don't believe as much on the passenger side, but we'll find out. And I believe this notch is to allow clearance for the brake line, so, um, yeah, this goes up behind the frame, and it protrudes at this hole, and this hole right here. So I'm going to go back behind the frame right now and just make sure that this doesn't hit anything. But again, on both sides, the notch should be facing up and that little hole on the bottom should be down. Okay, so we're looking at the driver's side side of the frame. And if you look at that little zip tie right there, that zip tie was kind of holding this wire loom into the frame. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to pry that out. And then you're going to need to sneak this up in here and then rotate it to the left end. Hopefully you can see that the brake lines are in between this U-bolt and the frame. Um, this tube right here doesn't matter too much. This is just a breather tube for the rear diff, so you gotta move that out of the way, that's fine. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is the wire loom is now making contact with this U-bolt, so um, I'm gonna get a piece of some type of chafing gear and just try and protect the wire loom a little bit better because you know going down the road and you get these little vibrations and you get this sharp edge right here wear into your wire loom uh, blow some fuses possibly start a fire so we don't want that so definitely put some chafing gear there and as for the passenger side there's pretty much nothing over here so you're pretty much clear don't have to worry about anything just added that one inch piece of wire loom to protect the wire harness. Okay, now it's time to tighten up the hardware. In the instructions, there's a very important sequence that you need to follow in order to torque this down and tighten everything up properly. Some of the bolts go down to 80 foot pounds, or well, up to 80 foot pounds. Some of them go up to 40 foot pounds, so it's important that you follow the instructions here. I have my handy dandy torque wrench out. And I'm going to do this portion off camera because I believe this is pretty self-explanatory as long as you follow the instructions here. Almost there. All right, now it's time to install the latch pin release handle. And as you can see, it goes through the center plate right there and then it gets connected right there. Now you have two different options depending on your truck and the clearances you have. They do include a carriage bolt, but they prefer to use a regular bolt. So We'll go under there, hook this up, and then the last thing I need to do is install the safety chain U-bolts. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do here 
So we need to drill a couple holes for the safety chain U-bolts. And then we need to drop the safety chain U-bolts down here, bolt them up, and there's some springs that go on here. Now, quick note, if you look at the bed rails, you see how this one is protruding up. We're not gonna wanna use these holes. We're gonna wanna use these holes because this rail is protruding down. And basically what that means is when we go to drop the safety chain U-bolts down, they're gonna sit more flush with the bed as opposed to if we put them here, they'd be sticking up a bit higher than the bed rails. Well, I'm very pleased to say everything's looking excellent so far. Um, now, this step is optional. I did it earlier when I installed the main ball hole here, but um, because we just bored fresh holes into our bed here, there's gonna be some bare metal. So it's up to you. If you wanna take some spray paint, just kinda coat that shiny metal, trying to prevent rust from spreading. I don't really care if I got black marks in the bed. But. Now I can drop my U-bolt seats, chains, hooks, and the holes, which I don't know if they're going to fit. I think I'm going to have to make these a little bit wider. Throw some spray paint down again. So now we're on to pretty much the final step of installation that's installing these springs and basically what you do you take the widest part of the spring put it face up on the u-bolts and then we have lock nuts which these come in a separate package Let's just get them started i'm going to do the same thing on everything here and then we'll go back and we'll tighten up the hardware now let's give her a test Now here's something important for this gooseneck hitch, which it does not state in the instructions, but if you live in the salt belt, or if you just like your truck's frame, I highly recommend this step. Now, with this side plate, there is a space on the top here where it sits against the frame. There's like an eighth inch gap down there, or up there. And on the bottom here, it's pretty much pressed up right against the frame. So because this is exposed like so. This is an excellent spot for salt and dirt and any kind of grime to collect back behind there and then that is just an ideal environment to rot away your frame. So what I've done in order to combat that is I've taken my caulk gun with a tube of silicone, so it's a silicone gun, I guess, laid a bead of silicone there and smoothed it out with my finger and now there should be no way that salt or any kind of debris or dirt will get back behind that hitch and rot it from the inside out. So highly recommended. All right, and that pretty much completes this gooseneck hitch install. Now, I will say that I think the quality and craftsmanship in the BMW are second to none. I, I really think that they're the best product out there for uh, gooseneck hitch systems. However, their instructions do leave a little bit more to be desired. You need to have good reading comprehension in order to do a proper job of installing this because it's all words, very few pictures, and the pictures that they do include in the instructions are black and white and they're kind of small and difficult to see. So reading comprehension is definitely key, um, as well as common sense. You know, the instructions weren't perfect, there were a couple points that they didn't include, which I felt like I, I did a pretty good job of including on this video. So um, definitely follow the tips I've suggested in this video, as well as the instructions, and use your own common sense. Now, finally, there is one other slight modification that you're going to need to do when you put your fender wells back in, and that's on the driver's side. What you're going to need to do is just cut a small notch where that release 
without having any clearance issues. And, uh, you don't have to cut much. You only have to cut maybe an inch and a half high, and half inch wide, just enough so that you can pull that bar out and twist it. And that's pretty much it.